Hi, everybody. This is Mitch Tannenbaum. Thanks for joining me today for the security news update for March 27th, uh, 2022. Uh, first item is um, uh, are the folks in Russia who uh, bomb children uh, are pleading at the UN for a cyber uh, treaty because, after all, they're afraid that um, I'm speculating they're afraid they're going to lose and they're hoping that they can go off and get a treaty that the rest of the world might possibly obey which, but we know that they won't obey because they you know really obey things that they don't like um hopefully you know a large number of people at the un will figure out that that this is just a smoke screen and uh not go for the smoke screen but um uh we shall see so that's something they're pushing uh, you know part of that also obviously is related to the fact that uh, the ukrainians seem to be hacking them uh and um uh and they're not uh being able to hack the ukrainians as well part of that of course is that uh the western world is helping ukraine protect itself and uh possibly china and north korea are helping russia but that may or may not give them much help so the next item along the same lines is the president continues to warn uh businesses to harden your defenses because uh, Russian cyber attacks are likely to be a form of revenge on the part of Putin. You know, they're not saying they did a classified briefing for um, about, I think, 100 companies, and then they did an unclassified briefing last week. So, so I'm guessing that they've got some intelligence here, some chatter, uh, that they're not really sharing the details of the chatter because that would probably give away um, the source that they have, and they don't want to lose that source. So, um, you know, my recommendation is harden things and, and that's always a challenge because it means changing things, but, but um, I would definitely recommend doing it. Uh, next thing is a piece of software from Cisco. I'm actually gonna share my screen here for those who are watching the uh, video version of this. This is a, a very interesting tool. It's an in, uh, internet outage map. Uh, you know, if you hover over one of these dots, you can see where it is and then you can zoom in. And if you zoom in, uh, depending on the nature of the dots, you'll see that these dots uh, actually uh, kind of expand and you can, you can see the details of, of what's going on. So that's an interesting way to get a real-time snapshot of if things aren't behaving the way you think they should be behaving, um, then uh, the website is called uh, thousandeyes.com slash outages, pretty easy to remember. Uh, and it's a Cisco product. So um, that's an interesting one, I like that. Uh, next is our, our dear friends at HP are reporting that about 250 printer models have a particular vulnerability, uh, which allows uh, hackers to inject malicious co code, uh, run denial of service attacks uh, and access data. Um, so uh, manufacturer recommends that you update your, the firmware in your printers. Um, obviously that's always a, a challenge in every company uh, that I've ever been part of, um, but uh, you, you gotta do that. Um, and I suspect we'll probably see more models of HP printers that are impacted. So uh, this also says, uh, by the way, network segmentation is a good defense because if the, net, if the printers are on their own network segment, then the only thing that, that can be compromised is other printers. And while you might lose a little bit of data in terms of things that are actually being sent to the printer, at least the rest of your network uh, won't be vulnerable to attack. On the legislative and legal side, uh, the political quagmire of the country continues to, to get stuck in the mud. Uh, this week, the Mesa County Colorado clerk and her deputy were indicted on multiple felony counts, about 10 counts in total. Um, I guess it shouldn't be terribly surprised given the political stuff going on in the country, but, but nonetheless, it's not great for people's uh, confidence in elections. Um, one thing I will point out is that uh, the, the county clerk is a Republican, the DA is Republican, the grand jury likely was comprised of a lot of Republicans because this is the reddest county in Colorado. So, you know, I'm speculating this is not politically motivated because I don't see how that would, would really help. 
and this county clerk, uh, uh, Tina Peters, is running for Secretary of State in Colorado in the next election to oppose the currently elected Democratic Secretary of State, State Jenna Griswold, who has really been uh, pushing uh, on, uh, on this clerk for the, the things that she did. In fact, um, the current Secretary of State uh, actually got the courts to uh, oust this particular county clerk out of running the current election. So there's a lot of bad blood there, I think, between the Secretary of State and the county clerk, but I don't know that there's a lot of, I don't see any reason why there would be bad blood between the Republican DA and the Republican county clerk in Mesa County. So we shall see, stay tuned. Um, this will go on, I'm sure, for a long time. Uh, the Republican party has asked her to drop out of the race for Secretary of State. It would be probably uh, not great for a, uh, currently under indictment for election fraud uh, candidate to run against the incumbent, that probably wouldn't help them uh, win that race. But uh, who knows what's going on there? We'll stay tuned. Um, one thing that's interesting, you know, we, we have, we get asked by clients all the time about, you know, what about employees that take data with them from their former employer or um, bring data from their former employer um, and apparently the feds are going after individuals for uh, violating the privacy laws. Uh, in this particular case, there was a, a registered representative of broker dealer, uh, and uh, he took the PII, including names and socials and stuff, of 1,300 clients of the firm. Uh, he was uh, fined $5,000 and suspended from the industry for 15 days, which doesn't sound like a horrible um cost obviously uh you know the firm uh, you know finra pointed out that the firm was also liable for breaking um uh finra rule s-p the privacy rule um so they may go after the firm as well but uh, i'm also guessing that this guy is gonna have a hard time finding a job in the financial services industry after after this because who wants to be associated with that in the area of breaches you know we had a a situation last year with JBS, the big meat producer in the U.S., getting hit by a ransomware attack. Well, this time uh, its turnabout is uh, fair play. Uh, Miratog Agribusiness, in Mos based in Moscow, uh, got hit by a ransomware attack. I don't know who did that, whether it's Ukraine or some other uh, unfriendly to Russia uh, folks. But um, uh, right now, given the supply chain challenges that Russia has, the last thing they need is is a uh, a ransomware attack to make things even worse. Um, but uh, they are the largest or one of the top two largest meat producers in Russia. So um, not a great situation for them. Uh, in in Europe, the Greek Postal Service was hit by a cyber attack, a ransomware attack. Uh, this was due to a missing patch where we heard that before. You know, people got to get their patching house in order because the hackers, you know, they don't have to go figure out a break in. They just go look for the missing patches. Um, the Greek Postal Service said that most of their services like post and bill pay and financial transactions are not possible at this point. Um, hopefully they get that back together soon. Because in Europe, a lot of people use uh, the Postal Service for a lot more things than just getting junk mail. Um, in Texas, a dental practice uh, had a da data breach. This is, this is um, kind of unusual, I mean, to me, maybe not to you. So uh, this is the NBA's partner uh, for the Dallas Mavericks called uh, Jefferson Dental and Orthodontics. That's not unusual. Uh, what's unusual is that uh, these guys lost uh, information on over a million people. Um, that's a lot of patients for a dental practice. Um, the data includes socials and passports and medical and health insurance information, of course, financial information like credit cards and other stuff. Um, and uh, uh, for whatever reason, uh, they seem to have a long gap in terms of when this breach happened uh, eight months ago, and that they're just now telling the Ter Texas Attorney General. Um, they did tell the feds in October, so that probably may have gotten them closer to um, 
uh, the the federal law, uh, but uh, that doesn't. I don't know what the Texas rules are in terms of of how much time you have to report breaches to Texas, but but uh, certainly uh, a million people uh, and eight months not a great thing. Um, in the daily blog post, we're seeing uh, that uh, you know we continue to see. I guess is probably a better way of saying this that uh, passwords just don't hack it anymore. Hackers are, are continuing to uh, enhance their tools. And now we're seeing that they're spoofing single sign-on. So, uh, and there's some easy ways they can do that. If they can lure you to a malicious site and they can pop up a logon screen that might look like an Okta logon, might look like a Microsoft logon. So they're not actually breaking the single sign-on. What they're doing is uh, masquerading as a legitimate single sign. So that's a training thing for your user community, you know, that, that to go off and, and uh, you know, if you don't expect a login for what you're doing, then you should certainly be suspicious. Um, and obviously multi-factor authentication really helps in this, in this situation. Um, yeah. And the next item is that Russia, generally speaking, hackers seem to be pretty safe in as long as they pay off the right people. Um, in this particular case, the uh, hacker uh, threatened a family member of another hacker uh, who really did not like that fact. That hacker went off and hacked into the first hacker's uh, online presence, discovered this guy had been keeping a diary for, for decades now, I guess, um, and leaked that to the press. Uh, that diary included uh, all of the corrupt FSB officials that this guy was paying off um, that probably sent some FSB folks to uh, Siberia. Uh, so the remaining FSB folks were probably not happy. Unfortunately, the guy that did the hacking was in Ukraine, so Russia can't arrest him. So they arrested the guy who uh, was keeping a journal. Uh, not sure that helps, but uh, uh, certainly there's there's some folks in the FSB who are, who are gonna be feeling really uncomfortable right now, not necessarily because they're accepting bribes, because that's apparently pretty common practice, but uh, because of the fact that um, they got caught at it. And that's, that's generally not good. Uh, and in last uh, but not least in the security news bites, um, Ukraine has started using Clearview AI's facial recognition software. Uh, you know that I've reported before that Clearview offered um, uh, that software to Ukraine. Uh, the, the folks at Clearview do not have a, a great uh, reputation in the privacy industry because they scrape every image that they can find, no matter where it is. They have about 12 billion with a B images in their database of which 2 billion come from Russian social media. Uh, the whole idea of using Clearview AI for um, uh, Ukraine is to be able to find people who are trying to infiltrate the Ukrainian business and the Ukrainian government and Ukrainian military. And you know, if they had any kind of social media presence, then Clive UI will have you know, details about them and, and they can get outed pretty quickly. So that's an interesting use, a, a different use than we've ever seen for Clive UAI before. Um, the FCC has also uh, published a notice of inquiry on digital redlining, um, as you know, and as I whine on a regular basis, you know, the internet on the, in the United States is just as good as many third world countries. You know, usually we rank, depending on the month, about 20 or 30 in terms of internet speed. And so, you know, the FCC is finally going off and looking at that and saying, hey, you know, what's going on here? Why is it that some parts of the United States have really horrible internet and other parts don't. They're asking for a lot of definitions, a lot of clarification. Um, so we'll see what kind of, of uh, response the industry comes back. They have 60 days to respond to this notice of, of inquiry. And um, hopefully, you know, it'll be interesting. Now, obviously a lot of it is economics, um, but we shall see whether it's, it's totally economics. Um, this one is a long time coming, although we've heard a rumor that it was going to be coming. The U.S. and the EU, when the president was in Brussels this week, signed a new data transfer deal. 
Uh, as you know, there is a, a an Austrian activist named Max Schrems, who has been uh, striking down these deals at the European court um, because of things that the U.S. government does, not things that business does. Uh, curiously enough, uh, the GDPR, the European Privacy Regulation, does not require the European state governments to go off and do the same thing that they're asking the U.S. government to do. So we shall see what happens here in terms of, of whether the courts strike this one down. Schrems has already said that they're going to look over this thing with a microscope, not just a magnifying glass. Uh, and we haven't seen any details in terms of what's in there. But it's good for U.S. businesses that at least we have kind of a, uh, a uh, draft, a straw man proposal, and we shall see where it goes. It's definitely better than, than what we've had, because right now people are just hoping that they're not going to get uh, whacked with a ma massive fine by the Europeans. Um, and, and finally, uh, and we'll see how well this works for Google, uh, apparently Google trains its employees anytime they're writing an email about something that's sensitive to CC the lawyers and say, gee, what's your opinion? The lawyers apparently never bother to respond because they know it's a scam. Um, and the feds have uh, asked the, the courts to sanction Google for this scheme. We shall see whether the courts do that, but it is an interesting scheme. And I've heard people doing it before. What I've never heard before is companies that formally train their employees to go do that. That's, a, that's an interesting um, enhancement to that kind of situation. So that's all we have for this week. Um, there are other um, video and audio blogs on the site at cybersecurity.us. Uh, please check them out. And as always, if we can help you, um, we'd be happy to do that. Thanks for listening or watching. Take care. Turnkey Cybersecurity and Privacy Solutions offers the complete cybersecurity program for small to medium-sized businesses. They include everything needed to secure your business and meet compliance requirements. Visit our website at turnkeycybersecurityandprivacysolutions.com to learn more.